Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to this uh, new uh, appointment with the light of life. Today we are celebrating uh, the great feast of the Epiphany of our Lord. The Epiphany, manifestation of our Lord. Let us really uh, pray that God may manifest himself to us today, may reveal himself and we may have eyes and minds and hearts to see, recognize this manifestation and revelation in our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your Son, for the gift of Christmas, for uh, the newborn Jesus that wants to come to our life, to transform our lives for the better. Help us, send your Holy Spirit, that we may listen, understand, and make our own, in our own daily life, the word you want to give us today. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born, king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard of the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, brothers and sisters, the Feast of the Epiphany, as I said at the beginning, manifestation, theophany, revelation of God, is, if you want, the breaking news of Christmas. Uh, of course, there is an event, a great event, the greatest event in your history, that God is born as a child in Bethlehem. But as we all know, especially in our no, hyper-communicative society where everything is about what really is put on the media, uh, if something happens but is not, let's say, uh, published, uh, is not in the news, is not in the media, is not nowadays on the internet, for instance, is like it never happened. Nobody knows it. So nothing, nothing changes. The epiphany is really with uh, the, this way to which God somehow publishes the news of Christmas, the news that he is born. And he does it by calling people from everywhere. And these wise men, they really represent the whole humanity, which comes 
and and knows and knows this God, God who became a child. How do people react to the news? How do we react to news in our life? To something that changes, that comes and makes somehow everything new. How do we react to that? You know, the, the epiphany or the, the gospel we read is very interesting because it really describes all the possible reactions that we can have in front of novelty, in front of something that comes from outside us and somehow shakes us a little bit, shakes our life. We have Herod. Herod is the king, is a powerful man. Though he's a powerful man, we know from the gospel. He's not a man who is really happy. He's a man who is, you know, concerned about his power, how to keep it, how to fight his enemies. And he has an interesting reaction to the news of Jesus, which is a great one, but he's frightened. He's afraid. If something changes, can only be for the worse. And therefore, it's better not to, to try to avoid that at all costs. That's the first reaction, which is very common for many of us, brothers and sisters. Sometimes we are so afraid that anything can change, and even if we are not fully happy, so it's better no change than anything. Better just not to touch anything. We stay where we are. I'm not so great, but I'm afraid that it can only get worse. <clears throat> then there is another interesting reaction in the gospel, a bit more, a bit more hidden, not so easy to see. The one of the priests that Herod calls to tell, the, tell him where was the Messiah supposed to be born. Now, it's very interesting because these priests, they know it. They know it all. In fact, they have been waiting for this event all their life. That's what the faith of Israel was based on, waiting for the Messiah. And they know he was going to be born in Bethlehem. In fact, they, 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 they give the good direction to the wise men. They say, go there and you will find him. But the funny, well, funny thing is that they don't go with them. I mean, someone comes to you telling you that the one, the thing that you have been waiting for for all your life is there. I mean, I think the first normal reaction would be, oh, I'm going to come with you for sure. No, they don't. They stay where they are. They say, go there, but I'm not going to come. Why? Deep down, they did not believe in that. Yes, they knew it with their mind, but their heart was closed. It was very hardened. In the end, they could not believe that really God was to come. They were disappointed, deluded, concerned only about themselves. And they could not open themselves to the possibility that that was only true. And then there is another reaction. The one of the wise men. You know, the wise men... It's interesting, even this. They are powerful people, like Herod. They are, in fact, in our tradition, we even call them the three kings. Though they were not kings. But they were probably people who served at king's palaces. They were people in power. They were knowledgeable people. That's why they're called wise men. People that the king used to consult to gain knowledge. So they must have been very learned people. So like the priests. So they were powerful like Herod, learned like the priests. But their reaction is different. They don't close themselves in fear. And they really hope that what they have perceived out of God's inspiration is true. So they are not afraid to leave everything behind and go and follow a star, which seems to be crazy. And yet they find Jesus. You know, brothers and sisters, it is normal until we are in this life on earth to be somehow not fully satisfied. Sometimes we are almost afraid of saying that, you know. How, is, how are you? Great! No, nope, no. But we know that's not everything is great. And it's right, because we are not supposed to be in full satisfaction here. There is something which in the tradition of the fathers of the church is called the holy dissatisfaction. Not dissatisfaction that comes from bitterness, but from the fact that I'm looking for something more. There must be something better in life. Something that can overwhelm me with joy, like the three wise men when they see Jesus and the, and the stars stopping at the top of the house. So, to find that, I'm willing to risk everything. 
If we are like Herod, we are not willing to risk anything. We say, I have a little, but I want to keep that and I don't mind about anything else. If we are like the priests, we are like so disappointed, and maybe we know a lot, maybe we are learned, but we we are uh, so disappointed with life that we don't really believe that anything can change. All these two reactions don't bring us anything. But the wise man, they gave us the true way. God is looking for us. Are we looking for God in our life? Are we really looking for something more? Do we believe that something more is there for us? That, that happiness and a joy that maybe we have never tasted is waiting for us. Already in this life and even more in the future. Because if our heart is open, like the wise men's are, then God will reveal himself to us. A star, someone, I don't know. God reveals himself in many ways. That comes and say, something has changed. There is a new possibility. There is a new opportunity. And we don't close ourselves in fear. But say, you know God, I want something more in life. I'm able to take a risk to follow you. And see where you want to bring me. Like the wise man. So today, brothers and sisters, in this feast of Epiphany, let us ask God that He may really open our hearts to His plan, which is better than ours, to His project, which is far greater than our own. And we can be really like the wise man, overwhelmed with joy. We give you thanks and bless you, Father, for this word you give us, for this, this great event of the Epiphany. Help us, help the whole world to know you through the events of our life. We may see your presence, sometimes hidden. Win, conquer our fears, conquer our disappointments, and make us true children of yours who desire to be with you. And trust you above, above everything else. We also pray for you today for all the brothers and sisters in the world that are suffering, that are alone, that we have lost hope. That you may come to them, give them new hope, change their life and their heart, and they know you as their Father. We ask all these to Christ our Lord. Amen. And we finish by entrusting again ourselves, our lives, and our deepest desires and need to our mother in heaven. As we pray with the same words of the angel, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.